Hi, today we are here at Formnex 2023 in Hall 12.1. We are proud today to present you the Shining 3Scan Trio, the new laser scanner from Shining. The first laser scanner that is capable to work without markers and doesn't need an additional camera to watch it. The FreeScan Trio is the next step coming from the UE Pro. You can see it as well in the size. It's bigger and it's more expensive as well. So this guy is going to be in the range of 30,000 euro and is going to close the gap between the FreeScan UE Pro, the former top model in the hand scanners, and the FreeScan Track. What is a professional scanner that's mainly used in aerospace and aviation scanning. The FreeScan Trio is like uh, the UE Pro but with additional functions. If you watch already my tutorials and videos uh, according um, to the functions of the UE Pro, you already know a lot of the functions that the Trio will offer. You will have as well in the Trio the technical photogrammetry that's integrated with the bars. You will have as well a single line laser scanning mode that we will show you later on. You will have the seven line lasers. You will have the 28, uh, 26 lines for the normal scanning. And you will have additionally what is new, 98 lines for the direct scanning without any markers. The third camera is what makes it possible with the Trio to scan without markers and without an additional external camera that's filming the scanner like in the free scan track. This camera enables to uh, scan a second view and to superposition enough information per frame to get a fine alignment through the geometry that he's capturing. This is what you see that wasn't existing in the FreeScan UE Pro and that makes it possible to scan without markers. For all of you that are not so much into 3D scanning and don't know what is uh, feature-based tracking, I'm going to explain that on a small sketch. So if you have a plane surface and you're scanning the surface with your scanner, he doesn't know without markers if he is here, here or there because the scanner itself might have a field of view that's in this size and he's not capable to see the position because for him all the positions look the same. It's the same as well for spheres or cylinders if they have no additional geometry. If you have texture on it, like um, some sprinkles or so, you can have a globe and have some sprinkles on them. You might be able to track it over texture. It is not that precise, but it's possible. But in the case of a, a bright white sphere, it's the same topic. If you look on, on this uh, sphere, it's looking from all the perspectives, it's looking the same. So no orientation possible. So the scanner doesn't know where to put the points related to each other. So he will just not be able to make a closed volume in scanning. And this is the same topic that's going to be relevant for the trio with the geometric tracking. I got to say I'm very pleased how good it's working because he's capable with very small curvature changes already to do the tracking. That means he's able to follow very small curves and because of this area that could be more or less one field of view that he's capturing and the fact that he has here in this area compared to the next frame that's having an overlapping, maybe I'm going to choose a different color to visualize that better. So this could be the next frame some milliseconds later that he's capturing. He's having an overlapping of curvature that enables him like eggshells to, to enables him to determine where the next frame has to lay and he can use that kind of the small curvature changes. They can be microscopic small. If he can read them, he can use them for tracking and orientate himself on the surface. That is the basics of geometric tracking. So let's start to use it and scan a little bit that you get an impression how is it working with the FreeScan Trio. The software is quite the same like you already know it from the UE Pro. You start a project, you create a folder that is your scan project. 
and you are going to select the resolution like you did before. This is the basic resolution for your main scan. Of course, you can uh, have an additional higher resolution for some areas like you did in the FreeScan UE Pro or the Combo. I'm going to accept 0.5 because we don't have a very special requirement on this very easy to scan part. And we are right now in the overview of the software and it will look quite familiar to all the clients that had already a UE Pro or any free scan. The software is quite similar or the same. So right here you have uh, additional uh, modes. This is the conventional 26 lines like we had it before. And you have here the 98 lines for the scanning without markers. We're just going to start a, a normal scan with the 26 lines of a small object. So you can use it like the FreeScan UE Pro as well. There is additional functions, but you have all that you had before. I'm uh, just selecting what I want to, to use as, as a mode. And I'm going to start scanning as I put the scanner on the object. What is new compared to the older software that you might already know is that you don't have any distance bar anymore on the left side of the screen. You will have the colors showing you if you are in the right distance. So you see there is green lines that show that I'm right in the distance. If I'm going too close to the object, they are going to turn red. And I'm going to scan in this way, very comfortable without always looking with one eye on the left side of the screen. So absolutely no problem. You see that scanning is really fast. And uh, if I want to capture the small gaps, I can switch to use a single line like I did before. So everything like it used to be, the good things that had been already implemented in the other free scan scanners will stay. You see here as well that the single line is penetrating much better the holes that we have here. Like the 26 lines. And that's it. So the same toolkit for um, cutting out your model, so nothing really different new. You don't have to learn anything that you didn't know before if you are already a user. So I cut away that uh, residuals that I don't like. I have as well the same options in the point cloud generation and so on. So if you're interested uh, in how to finish that part in detail, just watch my former videos for the UE Pro or the FreeScan Combo. Here I will just do a fast forward for you that you see it, but you will see that in detail in the other videos, so I don't have to repeat that again. So if you point the laser on the object, you are already seeing in the preview that you have the laser lines as an array on the surface and they are checking each other over the different cameras to enable you scanning without the markers. Here we have uh, an object that is having a lot of features in the geometry so it's not that complicated and difficult and you're absolutely fine not using any markers in 3D laser scanning and you can capture even in a reasonable speed regarding the fact that the system is calculating not just the points it's as well calculating the tracking in real time. As you can see it's possible to nearly scan the whole bike without any markers. So we have very good tracking, much better than I expected it in the beta tests of the device. It is as well quite fast regarding the amount of calculations that have to be done in this time. But you see as well that feature-based tracking has its limits and that's why there is a hybrid mode where you can add some local markers 
and get your skin complete in this case. We have here in the shroud of the bike some areas that are quite featureless. If I'm going to the end of the shroud, there is just one curvature still. And you see that here you have some slower tracking. But even this is already enough for the device to make the scan. So we are going to complete the scan as much as possible without using any markers. And afterwards, I'm going to apply markers in the areas that had been very difficult and uh, continue to scan. And I show that you can even merge the different mode-based scans in the program and get one model in the end. I tried to scan as much as possible without using any markers. And you can see that the result is quite complete. I didn't even uh, merge a lot of scan views, so it was quite comfortable to generate a quite complete model of the motorbike. There is some areas that are not able to be scanned uh, without markers. As a standard, I could have used some tracking help tissues like I did it in one of my previous videos. But I think in this case, for example, scanning the rims, it can be even easier to scan them with markers and I will be able to capture as well very fine geometry like local uh, screws or as well um, the chromed uh, sprocket connections and so on. So I started to scan um, the front wheel but shortly I realized that I'm running out of time because we had been on a public fair and there wasn't actually so many time slots to continue scanning and um, I just made a scan uh, with markers on the front wheel from one side to merge it in to see if it's possible and I think I will leave this for another video and maybe it's time to make a video on how to scan motorbikes can be one of the next videos you will encounter so that's it for today's video. I hope you liked the introduction of the Freescan Trio. We are going for sure to launch more information and videos on the topic. And I'm really curious to see where this technology will lead us. We have still two days of Formnex in front of us. If you have the possibility, pass by. If not, please like, subscribe and have a nice day.